Hey everyone, Joe here, and today we're happy to introduce you to the first part in our multi-part series regarding setting up your Elite Recorder for the first time. Today's video is just going to be about getting through the setup wizard. To get started, you're going to need to plug in your recorder to a power outlet and make sure it's connected to a monitor either by VGA or HDMI, as well as having your mouse ready. Once you have that set up, we can move on to the setup wizard, which should automatically come up once you power the unit for the first time. Let's get started. The first screen that you should be greeted with during the setup wizard is the device initialization screen. You'll have to first pick a location, and you can make this a little simpler by typing in the first couple of letters of your country's name, like we're doing here with the United States, and selecting that. You're going to want to set the language appropriately. For us, it's English. And make sure that this is set to NTSC if you are in the United States. Clicking Next, you'll be able to set your time zone. For us, we are set to Eastern Standard Time. Obviously, this may be different for you. Try and find that in the list. And then you can manually set the system time here so that you start off with the correct clock, which we're going to go ahead and edit for our own system time here. Click Next. From this page, you're going to be required to input a password on this screen. Your password needs to be a minimum of eight characters. After that, you can input a prompt question as well. Your password has to be a minimum of eight characters. However, you may consider entering in a password that has more than that and contains symbols as well. There is a meter here that you can see has turned green that will indicate if your password is weak or strong. Once you have an appropriate password, go ahead and click Next. Next, you're going to have to set a pattern for your recorder. This will allow you to log in without using the password. I cannot stress enough, however, that it is incredibly important that you remember and or write down your password somewhere that you will find it. Using the pattern is a nice, convenient feature, but the pattern is not something that can be used from other devices, such as a smartphone or computer, trying to access the recorder. And as such, you're going to need to remember the password. Input a pattern two times, and this will take you to the next screen. From here, we're going to input our password recovery information. The first thing that you're going to see is a field for email address and security questions. You're going to want to make sure these sliders are enabled, and you'll see that they're blue if they are enabled. Go ahead and input an email and fill out your security questions and answers. When you're done, click OK. For the next screen, you're going to want to leave the auto update checked, and this will begin the remainder of the setup wizard. Click Next. Here, you can name your device. By default, we're just going to leave ours set to NVR. You can give it a device number if you like. You don't have to change anything on the screen if you don't want to. Generally speaking, it's recommended to leave most of these options set to their defaults. If you are done and satisfied with everything you see on this options menu, go ahead and click Next at the bottom right corner of the screen. On the next screen, you'll have more advanced date and time settings. You'll be able to, again, manually edit the date and time and the time zone. You'll also be able to decide what format you want the date displayed in and what kind of indications or punctuations you want used to divide the dates. You can even say whether or not you want the time format in 24-hour military time or standard time. Now, the DST option for daylight savings, you can enable manually and put in your own daylight saving times or we suggest that you actually enable the NTP and change the windows in this string here to time.google.com. This will cause the recorder, when connected to the internet, to automatically update its time based on the appropriate time zone from Google's servers. When ready, click Next. This is the holiday page. If you have any holidays that might be used inside the scheduling system for the recorder, you can click the Add Holidays button at the bottom right-hand corner, and this will allow you to add holidays to this list. By default, there are no holidays, and it's not considered a necessary process in the setup. You can always go back to the schedule and add more holidays later if you wish. Whenever you're ready, click Next. The next screen is going to show your Ethernet port information. So this recorder that we're working with has two Ethernet ports. Our Ethernet port 1 is connected directly to our internet supplying router. And we want to make sure that the first time this recorder starts up, that it's given an IP address from that router that's free. So we're going to click the Edit button here. And we're going to change this to make sure that this is set to DHCP. You'll see that those informations go gray below or turn to zeros, which is normal. 
Go ahead and click OK after you've set it to DHCP. Once you've set that to DHCP, you'll notice that that information is unfilled and you'll want to come down and click DHCP on the DNS settings as well. This will gray everything out and you can click Next. The next screen is the P2P screen. If you would like, you can enable P2P for remote viewing now from this setup wizard. This is highly recommended as it is the simplest way to enable remote viewing using the QR code you see in the device SN field. If you want to leave this enabled, click Next, otherwise disable, and then click Next. This is the registration for any IP cameras you might find on the network. You can do a device search and tap that in order to have any cameras that you find on the network populate in and add them here. For a more detailed overview of how to properly manually add or automatically add cameras to the registry, check out our additional setup guide videos coming soon. For now, once you have any cameras you'd like connected to the device through the registry, simply click Next. This screen will show any available hard disks you have and their capacities. For the most part, as long as the hard disks that you have installed appear here, you should be good to go and you can just click Next. The last wizard pages we'll have to deal with are the recording schedule. We have another video that shows how to set up motion detection and with this, it does a better explanation of the schedule here. By default, your cameras are set to record 24 hours a day, but you can use this schedule to change that so that, that on different periods, they behave differently, recording either only motion, only alarms, or a combination of these settings. Once you've set your schedule appropriately, click Next, or you can come back to set it later. By default, the snapshot schedule is also set for 24 hours a day, and using the same techniques, you can change this schedule as well. Click OK when done. Congratulations, you've completely finished setting up your Elite Recorder for the first time. Be sure to check out the next videos in our series, which will show you how to initialize Elite cameras that are on a remote network to be used with your recorder, and the following video after that, which will be how to add remote cameras to a recorder. Thanks for joining us today. If you happen to enjoy the video or found it useful, please toss us a like and don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, stay safe.